Hey everybody, this is MoBaller12 here to help quench that knowledge thirst. Uh, for this video, I'll be continuing my discussion about uh, conversions, or basically converting from one thing to, to the next. If you recall from last Friday's video, which was on a general chemistry topic, uh, I talked about Avogadro's uh, number, the mole, and I talked about discussing from uh, discussing how to convert from uh, moles to grams, grams to moles. So now we're going to add a few more layers to, to that. We're going to add a few layers and that is basically how to convert from grams to molecules or grams to atoms um, or molecules to grams, so on and so forth. So you see what I have on the, ta on the board and basically we're going to learn how to convert from one thing to the next. I know the board looks a little bit intimidating uh, but bear with me. Uh, you guys will have a solid handle on this topic. Um, by the time I finish this video, okay? And again, the best way for you guys to understand how to do this types of problems is by example after example after example. A quick heads up: I want you guys to realize that the things that I have, have the things that I have on this board, basically going from atoms to molecules, molecules to moles, moles to grams. There's a lot more interplay. What do I mean by interplay? Um, there's a lot more connection basically going from one thing to the next. There's a lot of other things that you could convert to, but I'm going to be focusing on these four main things, the bare bones. This is the backbone that will give support for you when you're in your later classes. If you have a good handle on this, the other things will come easy and naturally. So I'm going to just focus on these four things. Realizing, I want you guys to realize that there's other things you could convert to. And there are shortcuts when you're trying to do conversions, but we're going to go through systematically. Um, also, just a quick little heads up, uh, just a little update. I do have a Facebook fan page, a link in the description box below. Check it out, show your love and support, um, like it, um, spread the word about my uh, Facebook fan page and also about my YouTube channel. I tell your friends, family, what have you. Um, also, in regards to the new series, uh, start posting your questions on my Facebook fan page. Uh, keep it very specific or feel free to upload a video with your specific question. Um, again, please keep it very specific and keep it very relevant to the topics I'm discussing. I'm talking about general chemistry and organic chemistry topics for now, so keep it relevant to those topics, okay? Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Again, link to my fan page in the description box. So now let's decipher this little flowchart thing I made for you guys, okay? Um, again, the only things that we're going to be focusing on are grams, moles, molecules, atoms, okay? Uh, X could represent a compound or an element, okay? So these X's here could represent a, a compound or element, and Y specifically represents a atom, okay? Um, so for example, if we're dealing with a compound X, we're going to look for, and, and the question asks how many atoms of Y do we have? We're going to use this specific flow chart, and that's why you have to do a little bit of bookkeeping and keep things separate. I wouldn't put X here because that would just get everything confused. That's why you have to have something separate as Y. Um, also, if you look at the arrows, you don't see any uh, one arrow going from one thing and skipping one of these guys and going to the next. You don't see grams to molecules, um, grams to atoms, or you don't see going from atoms to grams, so on and so forth. Um, though there are there is there are some possibilities where there are some shortcuts like I mentioned earlier. Nonetheless, we're going to keep it very systematic. So if you want to go from molecules and you're starting off from grams, we're going to have to go through this intermediate, which is moles, and then move on to molecules. Okay. And if we want to go atoms, we have to start from grams, go to moles, go to molecules, go to atoms. Okay. We're going to go through systematically step by step. Okay. So that's the other thing uh, in regards to this little flow chart. Also. I have these things up here, these ratios, okay? Um, and basically, these little ratios, which are known as conversion factors, help, and you'll see how these come into play, help link one thing to the next. So if you want to go from grams of X and to moles of X, you use this conversion factor on top to link grams to moles. If you want to go from moles to molecules, you use this conversion factor on top to link moles to molecules. Okay, so you can get to this specific um, unit. If you want to go from molecules to atoms, you use this specific um, this specific uh, conversion factor. Uh, same thing applies here. If you want to go from atoms to molecules, you use this conversion factor. Um, from here to here, you use this conversion factor. From here to there, you use that conversion factor. And, and I've already set it up, so you guys set it up in a way where all you got to do is plug it into your calculator. Um, 
but nonetheless again I'll go through it in more detail another thing I want, guys, I want, you, I want you guys to realize is that if you notice that if we're going from moles to molecules it's set up as such if we go from molecules to moles if we're basically going backwards all we have to do is flip that conversion factor over it's the same conversion factor um, but all we do is just flip it okay another thing I want you guys to realize and that's pretty much it oh yeah also just a quick little heads up if a teacher for example asks you a question like you know you have 12 moles of water how many molecules that type of question you want to you want to you know break it up as easily as possible and what I mean by that is you want to identify what is your given your given will be that 12 moles so looking at the flow chart you'll start off here and if the teacher asks like I said molecules you use the top conversion factor going from moles to molecules okay and we'll see a lot more examples of that so my whole goal for this video is going example after example after example okay so I'm gonna shift this up a little bit okay so let's just say for example um, your teacher asks well we have example you have 10 grams of water we want to figure out how many uh, molecules does that translate to okay so I'm trying to do about five or six examples just so you guys can understand how to convert from one thing to the next plugging this into the calculator is not the important part because anybody could do that setting it up in the proper way is the important part so again we're given 10 grams of water we're trying to figure out how many molecules of water make sure see I made a mistake already I should have made mention of what we're looking for molecules of water not just molecules your teacher could ask molecules of what it's specifically molecules of water we're asking I'm asking you okay so 10 grams of water we want to find how many molecules of water we have so if you look at a little flow chart we have up top our given is the 10 grams so we start off here and what we're trying to end up is over here molecules so the X represents the water and X also represents the water here okay so we're not gonna go on the bottom route because that's going from molecules to grams we're gonna take the top route okay going from grams of X to moles of X from moles to X to molecules of X using the conversion factors I have up top so it's gonna be very nice and simple so what we put starting off whatever's our given we put that number first so 10 grams Okay, if this marker works 10 grams of water make sure you write everything in regards to um, units uh, what we're looking for as far as what is a specific compound we're dealing with keep, you try to keep every single detail when you write out your when, when you write out your um, your equation or whatever you call it um, so we have 10 grams of water multiplied by we're going to use the first part where we go from grams to moles, moles of x, right? So we're going to use this conversion factor. So with this little ratio, we're going to put it right here, okay? So we put the grams of x on the bottom, so grams of water on the bottom, right? We're just copying this top thing, putting it right here. One mole of water. Okay? This is basically the molar mass, inverted molar mass, okay? Um so basically we use this conversion factor to get to moles so now we're at moles okay and you guys will see how it will work okay now we're trying to go from moles to molecules so we use that conversion factor okay so times it by um, one mole of x which is one mole of water and this uh, number here is going to be Avogadro's number which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd uh, molecules okay I'm gonna abbreviate it as M-O-L-C okay molecules of water this is molecules that's not a mole okay well you know what I don't want to confuse you guys let me put the whole word so molecules okay molecules of water okay and that's it so let's look at it okay so now we have our setup okay so as you can see we have our 10 grams of water and this first conversion factor that links us from grams to moles of x so that's our first conversion factor mind you we're missing some information here we'll take care of that and we have our second conversion factor which links us from moles to molecules of water and that's what we have here um, the mole again like I told you that this is the molar mass of water okay 
Now, how you can determine this is from the periodic table, and I've also discussed this in a lot of videos, how to determine this, so you guys should be comfortable with this. Um, but nonetheless, how you could figure this out is by looking at the periodic table. Um, I'm going to approximate the values, but again, use the values in the periodic table. Um, the molar mass of hydrogen is 1, and since we have two of them, it will be a total of 2 grams per mole for hydrogen. Uh, the molar mass of oxygen is 16, and since we have one of them, this will be 16. So 2 plus 16 will be 18. So the molar mass of water is approximately um, 18. Approximately, okay? It's approximately, let me make that look a little bit more decent. 18 grams, okay? And again, this is inverted, okay? And that's it. Now all we have to do is... Um, crank this out on our calculator and you could and another way to check if your answer is correct is make sure your units cancel out and I've talked about this again in numerous videos we see the grams of water and grams of water cancel out the moles of water the moles of water cancel out and you're left off with molecules of water and that's exactly what we want again I mentioned this and I've discussed this in a lot of videos uh, where we want to cancel out units right whatever unit we have up top if we have the same unit on the bottom, right, grams of water on top and grams of water on the bottom, they'll cancel out. We have moles of water on top, moles of water on the bottom, they'll cancel out. We're left off with molecules on top, which is what we want. And that's the answer exactly that, that, that that's the answer for the question that was being asked. So everything checks out perfectly. So we get our molecules of, of water on top, and that's the unit we wanted. And if we want to put this on our calculator, let's do that right quick. You guys should try this at home as well. Let's see. Um, so it'll be 10 divided by 18. Okay. I got 0.55 times it by, you have to put parentheses in your calculator, okay? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Basically, I got 3.34 or 3.35. So I'll put it right here. 3.34 times 10 to the 23rd. Molecules, water molecules of water okay so in a 10 gram sample basically what this translates to if we have a 10 10 grams of water if we have 10 grams of water on a little analytical balance or whatever type of balance you guys have that 10 grams contains 3.34 water molecules uh, 3.34 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules it's a lot okay um, so yeah that's our first example so let's do some more examples and again that's the way we're gonna understand this Crank this out in your calculator is not the important part. Making sure that you could, um, uh, making sure that you could set it up properly. That's the most important part. Let's do another one. Okay, so let's just say um, we have ten. When it's stick with water, because it's kind of easy. It's an easy, uh, it's an easy molecule. We have ten moles of water. Okay, how many? Um, hydrogen atoms H atoms do we have total okay obviously you could look at water and we say we have two H atoms that's not the question okay the question is asking we have a sample of 10 basically a 10 mole sample of water and that 10 mole sample of water how many hydrogen atoms do we have okay that's a lot more than just two okay if we only had one water molecule we would only have two H atoms, but since we have 10 moles, okay, that's a lot, it'll be way more H atoms, okay? So don't get confused, because I know a lot of students get confused with that, okay? So, let's get started. We're going to do systematically again. Our starting point is a 10 moles. That's what's given. So we look at our little flow chart. Our given, uh, our start point will be right here at the moles. We have to go from moles to molecules and molecules to atoms, okay? Atoms of Y, which is going to be the H atoms. So we're going to put our given first, which is our... 10 moles of water, okay, multiply it by our conversion factor. We're going to use our conversion factor we have up here. We're going to go from moles of X to molecules of X, and we're going to just plug that in right here. So one mole of water to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd um, molecules. of water right so let me make this a little more clear 
6.022 times 10 to the 23rd mo uh, water molecules, right? Let me zoom in just a tad bit so you can read my messy handwriting. Okay. To the 23rd. Okay. Now we're going to use our next conversion factor, which is right here. So we go from molecules of water. We're going to try to go to atoms of hydrogen. Okay. So there is this conversion factor we can use to link molecules to atoms. So one molecule. of water has a certain amount of hydrogen atoms. So one water molecule, now how do we determine how many H atoms there are? Basically in this ratio is asking you if we have one water molecule, that's what this exact that's what exactly what this is stating, how many H atoms do we have? Well, you can clearly see we have two. So the conversion factor that we put inside here will be two, referring to the number of H atoms. I could have made this a little bit more clear. I could have put number, number of, n number of atoms of Y or whatever, number of Y atoms. I could have made this like this. I could have made this a little bit more clear. Number of Y atoms, which is determined by looking at the, by looking at the formula. Now, if I were to ask you, let's just say I were to ask you how many oxygen atoms instead of hydrogen atoms, in this conversion factor, instead of putting two H atoms, we'll put one O atom because we're looking at the one water molecule and that's how many O atoms we have. But in this case, since we're referring to water and we're referring to H atoms and not O atoms, we're going to put a two to take into account for the two H's we have per water molecule. Now, all we have to do is put in our calculator and crank it out. Again, this is not the important part, um, but setting it up it is. So 10 times, six parentheses 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, okay, is 6.022 times 10 to the 24th um, times 2. I got 1.2. We're not worrying about significant figures, just to let you guys know. 1.20 times 10 to the 25th H atoms. So what is this saying? That's our answer, okay? This is our answer right here. After we crank this out. Um, it's basically saying in a 10 mole sample, okay? We have 1.2 times 10 to the 25th hydrogen atoms. That's a lot of hydrogen atoms, okay? So that's basically what it's saying. That's translating it. Best thing for you guys to do is once you get your answer is trying to analyze. Does it really make sense? What is it telling me, okay? That's the important things to do, okay? So that's that. Um, I've done two examples where we go from, um, from, from this side, basically using the top set of arrows. Now I'm going to transition over to doing some examples going using the bottom uh, arrows, okay? So I'll do two more examples. I think you guys are getting the drift, okay? Nice and simple.